Mine yawn. Let's see those teethers. See your teethers. Yeah, really. I mean, that's a decade in there. There you go. Yeah. She's thinking about it. Oh, we're getting tired. We're getting tired. <laughs> Try yawning a few times. Maybe he'll get oh. contagious. Oh. Oh. I got him in the yawn. Oh, Wayne, Mom. Hi guys, can you hear me there? Yeah. yeah. So welcome along to our Tasmanian oh, Development no. Center. Uh, my name is Nick. Uh, welcome along to our Tasmanian as well. Oh no. Um, so in this exhibit, we do have two Tasmanian Devils. Which will surprise me. When's over there? Uh, so we've got Bean and Morgan in this enclosure, uh, male and female. And over on the other side, we have Herod, just on the left hand side, and Darcy on the right hand side. So, at any point, these guys should be able to smell it. Come out. Oh dear. Bean and Morgan! If not, probably have to go find them, which I don't really want to do. Because it means they could be hiding anyway. So. Well, when's over there? Well, over. Yeah, so at the minute that's been a Morgan's sort of favourite place to stay. Um, so in the morning we, sort of, we kind of know where they are because there'll be a big clump of straw just outside their den. So today we've got a little piece of rabbit, each for them. Um, it might not look like much, but it's a big piece of meat for a small animal. So I'm just keeping my eyes out because they literally do appear from anywhere. Wow. Um, so many of those they are quite vicious, so they do live up to the name of the devil. Um, they are quite ferocious in their nature, which is why you can see them with chaps around their legs. Um, they do have the strongest jaw capacity of all mammals in comparison to their size. So you'll see the picture of the one yawning. Their teeth are absolutely massive and their jaw pressure is immense. Um, which is why in Tasmania, uh, which is where they're only found, they're called the cleaners of Tasmania because they will literally eat everything. They'll eat the bone, they'll eat the hide, fur, wow. absolutely everything they'll demolish every bit of it. God. Um, so that's what we try and give them here. We try, sort of try and give them similar to what they do in the wild. So we give them a possum, wallaby, chicken. Um, that's sort of their main diet. They are gorge feeders, which means that they sort of tend to eat huge amounts of small meat. So they eat huge amounts of results spread it out. So we give them two big feeds a week. So we give them on a Wednesday and a Saturday. And then every other day in between, um, they'll get something small. So like tomorrow they'll get a piece of salmon. Saturday might be just a big bone with nothing, hardly anything on it to chew. And then we also do give them sort of non-food based enrichment days, which is where we'll come and we'll put smells out, uh, different animal poo, animal hay, and just so it breaks it up and it's a little bit different for them every day. So I'm a little bit underwhelmed by them at the moment. Not only they're sort of banging down the door when I come over with food. Um, I will try and find them for you. So as well as that incredible sort of jaw pressure that you have, um, even though they might not look it, Tasmanian Devils are actually incredible swimmers, climbers and runners. Wow. It gets a lot harder the older they get just because they get a little, more, a little bit more cumbersome. Um, but the younger ones um, are quite nimble, really good at climbing trees, which is why you see some of the enclosures over there. We actually have wraps around the trees to stop them climbing up. Oh, wow. I think he's going to test the waters. There you are. 
Hey, Pini. She still is there. This is. Hello. Oh. You gonna come say hello? Oh. Oh, there's the other one too. Come on. There's, there's, there's two. two. <laughs> I told you that's where they be. There's two. Yeah, here they come. Get them out of the bushes. There you are. Oh my God. Hi, Morgan. That's not yours. This is yours. Okay. It's because she's the boss, so he knows if he gets the first piece, she will come and steal it. Oh, gee. Hey. You got it? You got it? Yep, yep. Oh, there you go. Okay. Where are you at? So, Peter is the only female that we do have here. We do have three of the males. Um, so, these two are five years old. Herod um, over on the other side is four years old. And then Darcy, who is the male in the corner, is six years old. Wow. So it might not seem a lot, but Devil's only lived to about seven. Whoa. Um, so it's a short lifespan, but yeah. it's a good lifespan <laughs> here anyway. Wow. Um, and so these guys are considered post-reproductive at the age of five, so we are not planning to breed for them. Um, but it's good that we are able to hold them and sort of have them as a key species for you guys to know about. Oh. And they're actually facing quite a bit of threat out in the wild, mainly from... I think called facial devil facial tumor disease, which only is devil specific. And um, some of you might have heard of it before. Mm -hmm. It's basically a cancer that they get from when they fight with one another. So they get facial wounds, body wounds, that then gets infected, uh, swells up, causes this huge tumor. Um, it's usually in the face, which is where there are fights with each other. And um, basically, just gets so big that they can't eat. Um, and then obviously they can't survive, which is a massive shame because it is sort of reducing numbers quite rapidly out in the wild. There isn't a cure for it at the moment, and um, they are still working quite hard on it. So it is a shame that they, if we do lose these little creatures, they absolutely love them. They're very unique. And um, feisty little things as well, which is fun. I always keep you on your toes. Wow, that's probably why we don't have them at home. Do they breed as well? Do you have any offspring of them? No, um, so we got these. It was only until about three years ago that uh, Tasmania Devils were allowed outside of Australia. So they're only actually found wild on Tasmania, but um, only Australian zoos were allowed to keep them. And then when they realised, they were like, oh, we're losing numbers quite badly. We've only got a handful of zoos that have got devils. And they only until about three years ago that they said, all right, we're going to put groups there, groups there, groups there, groups there, to try and breed and get numbers up again. So it was only three years ago that we got these guys. Um, but obviously, we do need to hold some of the older ones who we were like, okay, we'll have a non-breeding group. Um, they initially were all ran together as a big group of four. Um, Bean obviously was the boss, she is the female, they usually have a boss. <laughs> um, Herod is our younger boy, so he's a little bit more feisty. So, what happened was he got in a fight with Darcy. Darcy's our old man, so he sort of took it, and because he is old, they take a lot longer to heal. So, we had to separate Darcy off. Then Herod decided to take his chances on Morgan, so beat up Morgan a little bit. So, right, right, pay trouble, thank you. Darcy over there, and it actually works out a lot better. They all seem a lot happier that way because they are naturally sol solitary in the wild. So the only time they would come together is for mating or on a huge carcass, like a huge feed. You maybe get like three or four or five pebbles that will sort of come together and share a feed. Um, so Herod's quite happy being on his own. Bean's quite happy being here. Morgan probably wouldn't say that with the way Bean is with him sometimes, but he has to deal with it. Um, <laughs> And Darcy, our little sweet old man, is happy as Larry over there. He absolutely <laughs> loves being on his own. He's the sweetest old man. So he's not your typical devil. Because he is a lot older, he's a lot slower. He's, you know, he comes out and he'll walk up to you and you'll be like, Hi Darcy, he'll be like... <laughs> Whereas these two are like jumping at the table, right. pushing away. So he sort of doesn't live up to the devil name, but that's why we love him. Oh. He's a little sweetheart. How old is he? He's six years old. Oh. So he's considered geriatric. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Seven is the yeah. top. Yeah. Seven. That's it. So it's not very long, but it's a, it's a fast paced wow. good life. Wow. Um, like a, like a so females normally when they do <laughs> breed in the wild, they sort of come into breeding age um, from between eight to twelve months. Oh. That's when they sort of would come into breeding season. And when they do breed, they can have up to about 20 to 30 babies at once. Oh! oh. Sounds like a heck of a lot, but if you imagine because uh -huh. they're the largest kind of all marsupial, they're about the size of a grain of rice. Whoa! So then it's a race between these 20 to 30 different, 20 to 30 sort of babies to oh. race from inside up into a pouch. So they're going to climb up the body and then she's only got four teats. Oh. So out of that massive number, only four of them will 
survive. Mm. So it is like a sort of survival of the fittest, which ones will survive, and then it's a sort of 70 30 chance whether they will survive inside the, the pouch. Oh, wow. So what they do is they climb up, they climb inside, and then they latch onto the teeth mm. where they'll be there for about four weeks. Wow. And then that's they'll just grow in size phenomenally. And then they'll climb out and they'll climb around to her back where they'll stay for quite a while, a um, couple of months, and then that's when they'll jump off. She'll sort of teach them what to do, what not to do, and then yeah. usually about the sort of breeding age, when they come into breeding themselves, that's when they'll separate themselves off oh. and sort of go and find their own families. Oh. So they are sort of nighttime hunters, um, so they will sort of come out at dusk and dawn, that's when they tend to usually be active. Uh, we do try and keep ours a little bit active during the day, so that's why we come and do food during the day. And I'm putting enrichment out for them as well, just so you guys can see them, because they tend to just sleep all day. <laughs> oh. So have you ever been attacked by these? Uh, personally, no. Um, we always sort of, what we'll do is when we come in, we always do like a visit from the front, just to see if we can see them where they are. And then we sort of, now we tend to know where they are, so they pick there's certain areas where they like to be. Um, it is quite tricky with these big tall grasses, because this is sort of typical yeah. general habitat, yeah. and they do like to sleep under the grasses, so that's why we always take a shovel and always take our chaps in with us. Um, and it's kind of a prod it, if it makes a noise, there's a devil in there. <laughs> a, your 50-50 saints is probably on the other side. Um, but yeah, they usually sort of will indicate where they are in the morning. Most times they're sleeping in the beds. Um, it's sort of this time of the day when they will be up and about and around that you do have to sort of keep your eyes open and about, yeah. Um, but they stereotypically don't want to attack us. It's just because we're in their territory and they are quite territorial. So that is sort of when they would come into fights, is because usually devils will have three to four dens, uh, males in particular. And what they do is they'll have a den where they have uh, a den where they feed, where they'll take the food. They have a den where they like to sleep. They have a den where they just like to chill out. And then they also have a den where they like to take females. So they have like several wow. different homes. Wow. Yeah, quite lucky. Um, not looking for the females though, because during mating season, what they'll do is when they do find a female that they want to keep, they'll take it. You know, they'll take her to his den and then he'll keep her there. So we'll sort of keep her there until he knows that for definite she is carrying his children. And then that's when she'll be like, alright, see you later. Oh, gee. Oh, <laughs> see ya. So they will sort of eat, they will sort of eat until catch yeah. live food as well. So as well as just sort of eating the parry and sort of roadkill that normally is found in Tasmania, they will catch their own live food. Um, very rarely, it just depends how quick they are and how slow the other animal is really. As well in Tasmania, they haven't got really many um, threats out there. Um, and I'd say the main thing is just the facial treatment disease. And occasionally farmers will consider them as pests. Because they sometimes will really take down sort of small sheep, small lambs, in farmer's land. But that's just the devil being a devil. <laughs> Here she comes. So you can see these, so that's Morgan, that's our boy. You can see he's got quite oh, a yeah. thick fat tail. Yeah. Um, the reason why it's quite hairless is because he has been in quite a few scuffles with Herod in the past and Bean as well. Um, oh. She does beat him up now and again. Huh. Put him in this place. But the reason why they've got that big fat tail is because it does store all the fat. So if there is a time where they do go for long periods of time without any food, they can just break that down oh. and use that as a source of energy. Uh, they've also got, you see these ears, uh, ears they can go quite red. Um, so it's just a way of them getting blood around the system quite quickly. Um, Shorter back legs to front legs, so it's kind of like a pig, they'll sort of they'll have that rocking motion as they run. But we've got these huge, huge muscles as well, so that enables them to just clamber up and fight whatever they want, really. Wow. Well, if you guys have any other questions, please fire away. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the day. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, you said that the web, the the female is the dominant one here, but you also said made it sound like they're not dominant when it comes to breeding and all that. Yeah, I think it's just because of the way Morgan is. Morgan's quite a submissive devil. It's uh, Morgan. <laughs> mainly because she is pretty badass. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, she's one that you don't fight with. But normally, um, the world would be a bigger um, males would be bigger. Okay. He's just a bit of a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, they're not going to attack you. It would sort of, it would only be sort of defensive. I mean, they do have a feisty nature, and they probably would if you got close to them, but they wouldn't choose to come out and grab you. That's good. Even for food. 
If they thought you had food, then probably yeah. yeah. If you personally, and they're eating us. They oh eat no, it? they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They, they wouldn't eat a human. I mean, they yeah. won't eat predators. We're too big to take on. Well, oh yeah, are we? I mean, it's bone. Well, size-wise, we're we kind of over a devil, so I think we'd be a bit more intimidating. Oh, okay. If they just would. But a child? Attack your defense. A child? Possibly. Size. It's too bad you can't get one that's pregnant and you have the babies here. Yeah, it would be nice. Because you could bring them up. Yeah, I would love it. That would be amazing, you know, be huh? Awesome. Then you'd have all those babies and you'd be able to take care of them. Yeah, it would be great. It would be nice. But, um, you know, this is what we've got. This uh -huh. is what I work with. And yeah. You're lucky to have it, yeah. 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 My little kids. <laughs> so it's only the, the yeah, lucky to have the them. can only be done by them naturally. It's not something you can do and take them away from the mother. Yeah. yeah. Um, do that. yeah. I don't know if it's done as you know, so when the first one, I don't know if that can be done um, successfully. Uh -huh. um, possibly once that she has, they have come out the pouch. Um, yeah. If she at that point she then chooses not to, uh -huh. that's when we could step in and sort of hand yeah. raven. But there are a lot of complications and difficulties that do come with handling a lot of animals, which is why most of try not to. Uh, it's kind of as a last resort that we would step in and have rear. And just because as they get older, it does cause it. it can cause difficulties if you ever want to move that animal on, if you ever want to breed from it. Yeah. 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 And they don't sort of register it, especially right. first time moms. They will eat their young. Sure. Well, you got some challenges ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, make it fun. It's fun now. Yeah. Yeah. Keep you on your toes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that was great. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he's chuggy. Darcy. Look at him. Man. This is Morgan? No. Darcy. Oh, there you go. Got it? Good to get it. Good to get it. Can you take it back to bed? <laughs> so they've got like a number of different noises they make as well. Um, they've got like an arf, like a dog noise. I kind of figured out that there's two ways that they do it, so if it's quite low, it's sort of just like, hi, how are you doing type thing. Um, and the more higher pitched it goes, means sort of more worked up they get. Um, so especially when you see we're in the room working with those two, they'll be quite high pitched with one another towards me, or if I'm in there just to each other. And then if they sort of really miff, they sort of will snort or sort of sneeze at each other, so you like, choo, choo. you might hear that, Heron might do it a bit, um, and that's just kind of like, either get out, give me my food, or go away. Um, that's just sort of their way of telling us and each other. You obviously don't feel as afraid of these as you do with those, because you No, because that Darcy's, um, I mean, I've still got these on. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. the hand, I mean, you see a rat at your... Yeah. I mean, He's, he's, a, cats, he's a sweet little old man, so yeah, he's yeah. not he's he's not out to get me. He's just like, I just no. want to get on with my day, I want yeah. my food when it comes in. And he's quite happy just doing what he does. So if another person came here other than you, would they respond completely different? Because he obviously knows your scent and knows yeah, who you they're are. Yeah, they, it's just, just like I think the tigers and lions do that work with yeah, they, they know every person is different. Person. Um, my, my whole other team is female. So I'm the only male, so that I know I can definitely tell when they react differently to me than yeah. the girls, perhaps. Yeah. So you think that the one that's over in this skin here is probably the most vicious, right? Um, I'd say he's most feisty. I yeah. wouldn't say vicious. Is it teeth? Yeah. Big teeth. Like he, but that's just because he's quite young and oh, right. well, he's younger. Gotcha. Well, like say my one of my my um, my team leader, she's female. She can walk in there and he'll be fine with her. But then another female will walk in and he'll be quite jumpy. Yeah. And then I'll go in and he'll just be jumping at me. He's right over there in the corner, right here, waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. he is. Yeah. 
There he is. He's, he's running. He's like, why are you over there for so long? Come and visit me. It's like a dog. He's so excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I'll say he's feisty. Look at him. Two big feeds, so they'll get a feed, and the next big feed will be on a Saturday. Um, and so, like tomorrow, they'll get a piece of salmon or a wallaby tail, just something small, just so they can chew on, or it might be a bone, um, with nothing really on it, just for them to work the jaws a bit. Well, we, do, we weigh them, we weigh them every, every week, once a week. Um, so, we know their weights are, so if we know we, we sort of have ideal weights for all the animals. So, if he's anywhere close to being How do you weigh him? Uh, so we have a set of scales, so we take him inside, so what we do is we'll bring him across into the next den, and we have like a set of scales that we put inside the den, and we just get him to stand on it with a piece, we put a piece of food over him, and he'll oh. stand up on it, and that's how we weigh him. It sounds quite simple, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> You're a brave man. <laughs> you get to kind of know. What are you going to start working with a lion? Pardon? What are you going to start working with a lion? I already worked with the lions. They're part, yeah, they're part of the carnivore team. I was going to say, I mean, you had no fear. So we have lions, tigers, cheetah, Tasmanian devils, otters, red panda, serbals, and meerkats in the carnivore team. And so every day we sort of do something a little bit different. I was actually on serbals and meerkats today, but the girl who's doing this had to go to a meeting, so I was like, I'll do you in Canada. Oh, wow. Because I love, I love the devils. And out of all that group, what do you think is the most aggressive part of these guys, aren't they? Um, if they're going to attack. The ones that we actually deal hands on with these guys, yeah. Uh, lions and tigers we don't win with. Well, um, and they sort of 
we had quite a lot of fights and it came to a point where he was just spending all day inside the box just because we didn't want him out and like, well this is not very good welfare for him. So we recently took him out um, and so we put him in that enclosure and so we have people going in with him like six, seven times a day and um, spending time with him. You can already see it himself, he's way happier. Uh, yeah, you can see it, like he's so much more confident than what he was when he was with the big group. Um, and so the idea is now hopefully because he is such a valuable male to the breeding group of Australasia, of meerkats, um, we're going to get him a female or send him somewhere else to have breeding females. Oh, yeah. So we are still, you know, 